My brother-in-law died suddenly, and now my sister and her kids have to sell their home. That's why I told my husband we could not put off getting life insurance any longer. An agent offered us a 10-year, $500,000 policy for nearly $50 a month. Then we called SelectQuote. SelectQuote found us identical coverage for only $19 a month, a savings of $369 a year. Whether you need a $500,000 policy or a $5 million policy, Select Quote could save you more than 50% on term life insurance. For your free quote, go to SelectQuote.com. SelectQuote.com. That's SelectQuote.com. Select Quote. We shop, you save. Full details on example policies at SelectQuote.com slash commercials. All right, I always like to start out with something super interesting, but this one is going to make your skin crawl. I saw a TikTok video that will give you the worst nightmares. Here's how it goes. A lady received her brand new router from Spectrum, of course, that internet service provider. And guess what she finds crawling all over inside of it, all right? (sighs) It's a full-blown thriving colony of, I don't know, thousands of live cockroaches. No. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -mm. No, thank you. Now, keep in mind, it's fully wrapped, and so she didn't open it. And in the video, she flips it over, and you see all these roach legs just, ooh. Oh. Just, just uh, you can see the heebie-jeebies. <laughs> all right, if you have the guts, you can head over to my Instagram page, Instagram.com slash Kim Kometo, and you can see the horror show. And I started thinking about it. You know, I bet that router was returned to Spectrum from Snoop Dogg's house. Get it? Roaches, Snoop Dogg. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Tough That's crowd. Good. Tough crowd, tough crowd. That's right. It's Friday, and it means it's time for another exhilarating, exciting episode of Kim Commando Today. Now, this is not the Kim Commando show that I host on over 420 top stations throughout the U.S., and, of course, it's heard internationally on American Forces Network Radio. That's our podcast Monday through Thursday. This is our Friday show, and we have our two dynamic powerhouses joining us. As always, we have our amazing content queen, Allie Seligman. Allie? What are you going to be sharing with everybody today? I'm going to tell you about a piece of mail, not email, real mail in the mailbox Mm. that you need to watch for, uh, along with my reminder for all that tech stuff you always forget to clean, but I know it's gross, so we got to do it. (laughs) (laughs) It's just disgusting. Could you imagine roaches? Oh, oh, I didn't out. have router on the list, but maybe I should. <laughs> yeah, maybe check you for should roaches. have. <laughs> and then, of course, we have our magnificent millennial and our very own internet scout, Matthew Heffel. And Matt, what are you going to be talking about? Today? You know, I'm going to talk about how there's a huge Instagram influencer that was just arrested. I'll tell you oh. why. Um, why you don't need to smartify every single thing in your house. Um, and I'm going to end with a heartwarming story. So you got to stick around for that one. Oh, we always love those. All right, so I just have to tell you guys and gals that um, over the next couple of days, I'm super excited. I'm going to be going to UCLA with Dr. Aldave, and I'm going to be getting my cornea transplant. Yay! Yay! Uh, And in case you haven't heard, or maybe you haven't been listening long enough to know that, I can hardly see out of my right eye. Because when I was a kid, you know how like your mom and dad always says, hey, you know, be careful with that stick. You're going to poke your eye out. Well, guess what happened? <laughs> <laughs> you poked your eye out. <laughs> it wasn't me. It was this kid yeah. who poked my eye out with a stick, <sighs> and I ended up having a massive injury and uh, getting a coronary transplant at that time at New York Eye and Ear, which um, I was one of the first folks that ever had Whoa. a coronary transplant um, at, at that young age. As a matter of fact, when I was looking around, this goes back about a year and a half ago, I said, you know, I've got to do something with this. And so I Googled the doctor George Buxton. Uh, and I, you know, I knew that he had have passed away. And so I actually found his son, uh, who is an ophthalmologist and he works as cornea <laughs> transplants. Oh and my I gosh. wrote to him and I said, I just want to let you know, like, you know, uh, 40 odd years ago, your dad gave me a cornea transplant. And he's like, yeah, that's amazing. And, you know, he was so sweet. It was uh, I don't remember which Catholic saint day it was, but he wrote me back and he said, this must be my dad talking to me. Here you mm-hmm. go. And it was really sweet. So what this means, though, is that I'm going to be uh, desperately trying to not do anything for <laughs> at least a week, which is going to be incredibly difficult for me. Uh, but I'm going to be leaving all of you in great hands. 
uh, because Allie is going to step up to the plate and she's going to be playing the role of Kim Commando over the next couple of weeks <laughs> on the Friday edition of Kim Commando Today, the podcast. So, Allie, thank you for stepping up and doing that. Matt, yeah. it's up to you to keep her in line. You know, I, be I here. can do that. You don't have I might to get a little crazy power hungry. <laughs> yes, she's going to be sitting there. <laughs> I am the amazing <laughs> content queen. <laughs> Yes. I'm coming with a crown next week. Watch yeah. out. All righty. Well, let's get started already with the news. And I like to go first. And if you haven't noticed, there's been this crazy surge in health apps playing fast and loose with all of our sensitive data. This past week, the app Premom, I don't know if you heard about this, but it's designed to monitor, obviously, a woman's menstrual cycles, ovulation, pregnancy, all this other information. And then it encourages you to import all your data from your other apps like Apple Health. Well, here's the kicker. While you were putting all your sensitive information, personal data, a lot of it, uh, into this app called Premom, well, it was sharing it with third parties. Oh. Yes, it was, uh, including two China-based companies. Hmm? What's that Super. about? And also Google, without your consent. Oh. So uh, the FTC said this is bad, and they I don't think they fined them very much. $200,000, it oh, seems come like. Oh, come on. That's yeah, nothing. it seems like. That should be a lot more like, I was really hoping for millions. Uh, this isn't the only health app that's been caught sense, with your sensitive information and just sending out to who knows who. Mozilla, that browser Firefox that now oh, yeah. has almost a 0% usage. <laughs> mm. Just amazing to me how fast these things come and go. Yeah, uh, They have something called Privacy Not Included. Here are some other ones that they, they spotlighted. Talkspace. Uh, they say that in their privacy policy that, that they can use inferences they make about you from when you sign up in their questionnaire to serve you tailored ads. Ugh. Sesame Workshop. Oh, come on. Sesame. What? Yes. Right. Uh, these guys recently updated their privacy policy. So they're getting all this information and then they combine this with data that they get from data brokers, data enhancement companies, whoever they are, and social media sites. Yes. Mm. Uh, replica, my AI friend. That's where you can have your very own girlfriend. You don't need that anymore, Matt. You can delete nope. that app from your phone. Oh, good. <laughs> it's been eating That's up all the storage. <laughs> yes. Uh, they say that they can record and sell and do whatever they want with any of your photos, videos, voice, text messages. That's oh, funny. no. Mm -hmm. yeah. Imagine That's all the things good. people are telling their... Virtual girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Ugh. Wouldn't that be <laughs> yucky? <laughs> Uh, but speaking of apps, you know, I ordered some German food right before we came on to do the show <laughs> through a mobile app. And let me tell you, the sauerkraut was so good. <laughs> but the worst is yet to come. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Matt, take it away. Tell us what's going on over at Instagram. Yeah, I've been really, really trying to focus on heartwarming good stories when I talk about the news, <laughs> but this story kind of hit my shelf and I was looking at it and I was like, I really got to talk about it. It's both fascinating and really kind of gross, like awful. <laughs> Great. Yeah, I know. There Bring is it. an Instagram influencer who has 4.2 million followers. Her name is Ooh. Mona Faiz Montrag um, and she is from Ghana. So she's 4.2 million and her entire Instagram is just her high fashion on flying jets in New York City and London, really? all these big expensive we're, we're things. Talking, we're talking about Ghana and Africa, Yes, right? yes. Okay. But she flies right. around the world on private jets and all this like super expensive clothes and that's the, her whole Instagram. Wow. It's an Instagram influencer thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, she was just extradited from London to New York City where she was arrested on charges of wire fraud, conspiracy to steal, um, amongst other charges. This is all in relation to a romance scam <gasps> that collected over $2 million. Oh, no. So here's what was happening. It was a classic romance scam where they would reach out, use fake names and convince older people specifically in America that they were falling in love and they needed their help to come visit them or whatever. And they would send them money and then they would be gone. We all talk, we've talked about romance scams forever, but she did something a little bit worse. What she did was she actually used her real name, would contact people and spend months scamming them out of little bit, little bit, little <gasps> bit. 
She oh. said that her father needed help for the farm in Ghana. And there was one victim that she scammed 82 times and collected over $88,000 from. Oh my gosh. She did this multiple times. She herself is accused of over a million dollars out of this $2 million complete case. So she's using like her real account to yeah. scam people. So mm-hmm. you think you're just oh. talking to this superstar babe. Yeah. No. Oh yes. my gosh. Yeah. Well, I mean, you are talking to her. Wow. Yeah. And so she got extradited. She is under arrest. There was a $500,000 bail that she did take, but she is not allowed to leave the United States and is now, um, you're like this, Kim, in a New Jersey house uh, with her aunt staying under house arrest until her trial. So oh, that'll yeah. be just like you, Kim. Right. Under, house yes. arrest. <laughs> <laughs> under house arrest with an eye patch. Oh yeah. gosh. Do we know if she is also wearing an eye patch? Bag? You know, um, I will I will do some investigation. <laughs> but, you know, this one really hurt my stomach just to hear like romance yeah. scams are like some of the most devious. I mean, gosh, these people are just like lonely, looking for love, trying to find someone. And these people take advantage of that and just like waste their not only money, but their time and their emotional stability. And that's just it's it's really messed up. Seriously, it, it is. It is totally messed up. You know, on the show. This weekend is yeah. that I one of our callers uh, got an app, and well, first of all, let me back up. One of our callers he he went and got a house loan mm. for eighty thousand dollars because he said he was going to invest that. Okay, so he gets eighty thousand dollars. He takes twenty odd thousand dollars and then puts it into a crypto app. Okay, <laughs> and okay. then meets then a woman pretends with this app that she's with the customer service. He downloaded some bad oh. app. I mean, anyway, it's just, cla- and then he gets contacted by a lawyer, quote unquote, mm. that mm. says you've been laundering money. Anyway, it's just this crazy, crazy oh story gosh. that's going to be on the, the show this weekend. Mm. Um, oh God, so we're going from bad news, Matt, to bad news alley. Is that right? Wow. From bad to worse. <laughs> yeah, we are. Um, I, let me just admit to everyone, I hate checking the mail. It's yep. only junk ever. Uh, and sometimes, like, I always get fooled into opening these things that look very official. And they're never official, right? And mm-hmm. there are usually clues. But one of those very official things that is landing in mailboxes uh, apparently comes from your mortgage company. Okay. And then the home warranty department. They look pretty legit. Uh, so much so that a lot of people are getting fooled by these and paying for things. And then reaching out to the Better Business Bureau and saying, like, uh, I fell for this. Okay. Uh, Again, looks super official. Um, Basically, you don't know it's fake unless you look at the bottom. And in tiny, tiny text, there is something like, we're not affiliated with your current mortgage. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, One person shared, they said that their letter actually looked like a check. You know where it has, like, the Mm tear-off thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. A check for $199. No, this was actually a renewal fee voucher that they could use for this warranty service. Okay. Uh, And then at this point, you get the letter, the follow-up letter, right, that says, uh, excuse me, you didn't renew your home warranty. And so you think, oh, this is fake, right? There's a phone number. Call the phone number. Try to tell them, no, I don't need this. That is when they really lay into you. Mm -hmm. Um, The people who work at these phone lines, I'm sure the training is like a college course, right? The way they know how to fool you. They know how to get money out of people. Uh, One of the biggest tactics, of course, always is scare tactics. You're going to lose your house if you don't sign up for this. And we all know, um, sadly, the people that are most vulnerable to that might be older people, Uh, sometimes people with memory issues or, you know, I even sometimes think like, did I pay that? Right. Luckily, I have almost everything on on auto pay now. But so scary stuff. If you this is a good one. Talk to your older family members, especially about it. If they get anything about a home warranty, almost just say into, no. Just yeah. say no. It's <laughs> fake. Uh, these kind of things never come to you. If you want a real one, if you want a good one, you're going to have to go out and find it yourself. You know, I also get some of these that say and I'm sure you guys have gotten them, too, if you've registered a domain is that you get letters in the mail saying, hi, we're from China, and somebody's mm-hmm. trying to get your domain. And yeah. it's just so anywhere, it just seems like whatever you're getting in the mail, just really do a double <laughs> and triple Everything's check. Fake. You know, it's just yeah. that's it. You know, speaking of the Better Business Bureau, they've been getting a lot of complaints about Teslas, you know, like how the full self-driving mode just doesn't work, and there's no AM radio uh, that's part of a Tesla because, you know, they say mm-hmm. it interferes with the EV engine. 
Hmm. Um, not that there is an engine in the EV, but you know what I mean, that whole thing. Um, <laughs> but now they're also getting plates about the interior, that no matter what people do, it's just always, always stays musky. <laughs> oh, I know, that was bad. All right. Uh, coming up, get ready to cringe because I have a way to look at every single comment, like, or share that you've ever met on Facebook. We're all no. of infinity and beyond. That's right. Uh, Matt's going to reveal which connected appliances are really worth it. Now, this is interesting because you are the generation, Matt. You are the yeah. generation that that wants everything super smart. Um, Allie's going to get down on the words that trigger smart assistance. And I have, I have a joke at the end. Okay. And I will tell you. <laughs> Uh, I was, you know, I'm, I'm really stressed. I got a lot going She's on. She's busy. So it may not be the funniest joke, but hey. I'm just, I'm already prefacing that it's because I'm busy. But I think it's okay. I mean, okay. Maddie okay. laughed. We'll take it. But I don't know if Maddie laughed because sometimes I'm her boss or, if, no, I'm just saying. You know, that's just <laughs> Yes, the way that's, why. <laughs> that's why. That's why. Okay, stay right where you are. When you need auto parts, O'ReillyAuto.com is just a click away. Order online and pick up at your local store. Visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Okay, you came to the right place, my tech-savvy friends, because you know it's a world of cutting-edge technology where all this mind-blowing information just waits for you at every single turn. Now, you can keep it going every single day of the week because you are going to be getting our free newsletters. And they are just amazing. They are incredible. This is something that you've never seen before. I say, and I think it's true, this is the best tech newsletter in the entire world. There's nothing better than this newsletter, okay? Try it once, and you're going to agree, and you're going to leave me a comment. I know you're going to say, Kim, you're right. This is the best. Best tech newsletter in the entire world. So so where do you have to sign up? Very easy. Go to getkim.com. Once again, that's getkim.com. You're going to join about 400,000 folks who love this newsletter every single day. And again, that address is getkim.com. Getkim.com. If you just sign up, then I can stop begging you and nagging you and doing it every single week. So once again, that's getkim.com. All right. This is part of the podcast where we share some quick tips. And how long have you been on Facebook, Matt? Oh, I remember it was 2008. I was in my college dorm and I signed up for Facebook. <laughs> wow. Okay. How about you, Allie? Um, when did Facebook start? Because I think then I had to use a .edu. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was when you couldn't sign up with a regular email address. Yeah. Ditto for me too. So it's just yours. So you've made a lot of likes and comments during that time. And guess what? They just don't vanish. Facebook has been saving every single <sighs> one. Yes. Oh boy. So if you want to take a trip down Facebook's memory lane, uh, what you do is you head to your Facebook profile and you look at activity log. And from there, you want to look at likes and reactions. And then you'll see every single post, photo, or status update you've ever given the thumbs up to. Yes, love that mm. one. Um, <laughs> now, we all change over time. So if you see something that you don't like anymore, guess what? You can unlike it. Now, what about comments? I know. You were so smooth. Oh. You were so witty. Oh. You just cracked yourself up, didn't you? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to judge. Uh, then you want to go over to activity log, and this time you're going to select comments. And there you have it. Every downright embarrassing comment that you've ever made <laughs> oh, no. on Facebook. Okay. Now, I want to ask you one more question about Facebook before you go, Matt. Um, okay. Do you still go on Facebook? No. <laughs> you know, I have it. I very rarely go on it. Um, I think that, you know, with the new iPhone updates where it does just, this doesn't have it downloaded anymore. So I think if I clicked the app, it would have to re-download anyways. But it's been a while, probably a few months. Yeah, like once a year. Okay, I yeah. go on at least, at least once a week. Okay. How and are things going there? And here, <laughs> yeah. Here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. Um, I have a friend who lives in London. And Elaine, if you're listening, shout out shout Elaine. Out Elaine. Um, shout out to Elaine. Okay, because I look at Elaine, I look at your profile every single week. Do you know why? Because I'm looking for Elaineisms. Okay, Elaine posts the greatest memes. She really, <laughs> she <they're> does. Great. <laughs> they're just great. Okay, and they're always like family friendly, and they're funny, and they're cute. 
Uh, so, Elaine, if you're listening, I just want to say thank you for always posting those memes. Well, you know where you can see used. these memes <gasps> at the end of the current newsletter. Oh my God, there you go. Oh, my gosh. Get That's Kim.com. Right. You can see them. Yes, <laughs> you can do that. Yes, absolutely. All right, Matt, you're up next. Smart appliances. Yeah. Come on, tell us. Okay. Me and my fiance recently bought a house. Yay. Uh, it's very exciting. Yay. But the previous owners had smartified everything. I'm talking smart laundry. I'm smoking dryer. I'm talking dishwasher, the water system in the backyard, the, uh, you oh. know, the doorbell and all the standard stuff. But I was going through them and I'm like, some of these things, you know, they really don't need to be smart. Like, I feel <laughs> like you're paying a lot of extra money for something that you, you know, you don't really need it to be smart. For example we have a smart dishwasher. And at first I was like, cool, a smart dishwasher. This is so <laughs> awesome. But why? It's a button that you push and then you close the door and you know, it, it has the lights on there. You can look at it and it says clean on it. So what do you really need this for? Especially when they're so much more expensive than a normal dishwasher. I mean, you're talking a few thousand dollars more. That's that seems dumb. For, for, really? Yes. So a standard dishwasher, uh-huh. you know, you can get from one of those resale places about six to eight hundred dollars. But if you want the brand new smart dishwasher, the cheapest one I was able to find was a little bit close to two thousand dollars. Dang! And I was like, "Is this worth it?" So what's the purpose? So that you can, when you're at work and you're saying, "Wow, I hope that the dishes are going to be clean when I get home." Yeah, I or guess. Something. Or you're it? laying in bed and you're like, "Did I start the dishwasher?" You can not get up and walk to the other room and press a button. Can I mean, you close the door, though, from the app? No. Well, then it's useless, it's right? It's useless, yes. Because, yeah, sometimes I will say, Alexa, sorry, uh, lock the front door or turn off the lights. Yeah, that's true. But I don't have to yeah, do anything. <laughs> yeah. But I, I'll tell you, I have never laid in bed asking myself if I started the dishwasher. No. That has never happened at least never, ever once in my <laughs> in your life. your whole life. <laughs> you know, yes. I was thinking about this and I found two other insane smart products <laughs> that I, I think people are buying, but I'm asking myself why. Okay. The first one is called the Harpy Fork. Have you ever heard of this? No. Okay. It is a smart utensil. Now, how it works is you connect it to your phone and you tell it how you want to lose weight and what your weight loss goals are. And if you eat too fast, it vibrates and makes you slow down. And then it tracks how quickly you're eating over time so that you can train yourself to eat slower and lose weight that way. Absolutely not. It's $100 and it has a monthly fee to use the app. No, honest, a yes. monthly fee? Yes. So you're that paying is just $100 ridiculous. for a fork. Cool. And it's made out of plastic. So <gasps> great. Okay, but the last one, we have to talk a little bit of crap, literally. <laughs> Smart toilets, okay? Now, you ever been sitting on the toilet and you think to yourself, <laughs> man, I just wish there was a better lighting ambiance coming from underneath me right now. Wouldn't that be nice <laughs> no. if it was like a green hue? I know I think of that every single day. Okay. Well, there is the Numi 2.0. Now, it has mm. Alexa enabled. Um, it has cleansing features. You can think about what that is. Like a bidet? Um, like a bidet. Okay. Um, and it also has yeah. heated seats, uh, you know, on extra cold days. But here's the thing. It's almost $12,000. What? <laughs> no. Yes. $11,500 right now at Home Depot. You can go get one. And I was thinking, you know, maybe. maybe <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> well, you know, I, I will tell you, I have a Toto toilet, okay. you know, and now we're going in the crapper. Um, <laughs> and, you know, those heated seats are yeah. actually pretty cool. I mean. But you can get a heated seat in a bidet for way less yes, than $12,000. Oh, yes, this is this is one of those things you just put yeah. on the toilet. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, and I will tell you, since we are talking toilets, is that if you have an older family member, they're great. Oh, because yeah. mm. he and I was telling Joe because she her, her parents are a little older. I said, you know, you should get on this because you know, older folks they don't have that dexterity that they mm-hmm, need mm-hmm. to put their hands wherever they want to go. And this just is like like you're going to the car wash. It's just <laughs> I mean, <laughs> going to the it. car wash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Allie, talk to us about smart assistants. Yeah, uh, no more toilets here. Okay. We know that our smart assistants are always listening because they are always listening for the wake word. I love that um, we'll get, you know, usually Amazon fighting with us about this. Anytime we write about it, like, we're not always listening. We're just always listening for the (laughs) Mm wake. What? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. 
Um, oh my gosh, I know. There's a study from Ruhr University, and they found all of the words that can accidentally trigger your smart speaker. So if you are one of those people that think, oh my gosh, Surrey is always recording me without my knowledge. This must be a conspiracy to get off my information. You probably just said a word that really sounded like that. So mm -hmm. um, apologies in advance. I am probably going to set off your smart assistant right now if you have one that might be listening to this. So here are some of the verified to trigger your voice assistant words for Alexa. Unacceptable. Mm. So if you're yelling at your kid or something. Election. <laughs> All excellent. Okay. okay. All excellent. Yeah, All I can see excellent, how that man. A letter. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Uh, Google Home, which is OK Google, right? That's the regular one. Uh, OK, cool. We'll set hmm. it off. <laughs> <laughs> OK, who is reading? <laughs> which, like what? I wouldn't say that, but anyway. Who's uh, reading? <laughs> OK, you know, which that, I mm. bet people set it off mm -hmm. with that quite a yeah. bit. All right, then we've got Surrey, a city. Uh, hey, Jerry, if you have a Jerry in your home, <laughs> sorry. Hey, seriously, seriously. Oh, yeah. And that scary can work because oh. it just hits all the same tones. Isn't that funny? Uh, there's also Cortana on the list. Uh, raise your hand if you <laughs> Never <laughs> even this? have Cortana <laughs> on anymore, but these ones are so funny that I do have to share them. Montana, mm. Fontana, and Frittata. <laughs> well, now I want frittata. frittata. That sounds good. <laughs> you know, I talk about frittatas a lot. <laughs> I mean, same. Never, ever. That's okay. So that's interesting. So, in, so if maybe if your smart assistant has been recording you, then it may not have been, you know, if your smart assistant has, has been answered, maybe in fact you actually said something yeah. that mm -hmm. triggered it and it wasn't just some creepy thing that was. A going. cool little trick you can do too is at least this works, works with Alexa. I don't know if it does with every smart assistant, but you can say, why did you do that? And she will tell you what triggered. Oh, yeah. that's fascinating. Yeah, that's cool. That's interesting. All right. If you like these short tips, then make sure that you get our daily tech update. Wherever you get your podcast, just search for Commando with a K, and that's the daily tech update. Now, here's the deal. The daily tech update is one minute, okay, that comes with the same feed as a digital life hack. So that gives you two minutes of fresh content every single day. Now, think about how you could spend two minutes, Okay. Uh, you could be making a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay. You could be feeding the dog. Uh, I know some of you guys might be saying, yeah, that's two minutes for me. But think about two minutes and brushing your teeth. You guys didn't even get that joke. Two minutes on a guy. <laughs> think about. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Okay. Now, you could be brushing your teeth. Right. Two minutes. So every morning from now on, when you brush your teeth, I want you to listen to the daily tech update. OK, because that's full two minutes. You're not be sitting there singing happy birthday or anything like that anymore. <laughs> OK, just you get two minutes of fresh content every single day. So, again, wherever you get your podcast, just search for Commando with a K, of course. All right. Still to come. How dirty laundry turned into a woman's income. Twenty four thousand dollars a month. I'm tell you about that. Matt's going to share a great story about a GoFundMe. And then when's the last time that you actually cleaned your tech? Oh, mm. Allie is here to save the day. So stay right where you are. Hey, you better not miss out on these awesome podcasts Monday through Thursday. Okay, they're perfect when you're on the go, you're on a walk, you're driving or just chilling at home. And so this way, I will be your virtual companion every single day of the week. That's right. It's just you and me and the podcast makes three. So wherever you get your podcast, I know you already get Kim Commando today. So make sure that you're also paying attention to and you're listening to Monday through Thursday's podcast. All right. So it's time now for my what the heck headline of the week. And it starts out like this. Woman's side hustle turns into an income of $24,000 a month. Dang. Not yeah. a year. $24,000 a month. more. Okay. <laughs> so back in 2019, a woman by the name of Christina Sonia, she got off her shift working as a medical lab tech. And then she would drive for Uber. She'd do Instacart. And then she said, wow, I bet you there's something else I can do to make money when I could stay at home. That's when she found Poplin, which is an on-demand laundry delivery service. So basically, she would go out, pick up people's dirty clothes, and then bring it back to her house, wash it, and then go ahead and have it delivered back. So she was making about 400 bucks a week doing that. Pretty good. Just picking yeah. up people's dirty clothes and doing it. 
And that's when she said, you know, I'm really in onto something here. And she always had a dream. So she would take that $400, $500 a week, and she'd put it into a savings account. And she did this for about six or seven months. Then what she did is she had enough money to make a down payment on a laundromat. (gasps) That's right, on a laundromat. And uh, she's now making about $24,000 a month, which is pretty great, yeah. Yeah, isn't it, seriously. for running and operating a laundromat. And so she said what she took away from working with Poplin is that uh, that it's still a viable business model. So she has set up a side business in the laundromat where she has her own business, not part of Poplin, where she will go pick up laundry mm. mm-hmm. and then... And then clean it and then bring it back. And so, as it turns out, one man's dirty laundry <laughs> is another woman's $24,000 a month. Good for salary. her. Dang. Crazy. Um, but did you hear what happened at the laundromat the other day? Did you hear what happened mm. about it? Well, three clothespins held up two shirts. <laughs> oh, I crack myself up sometimes. I know. All right. So, Matt, you are our internet scout. Yeah. Tell us what everybody's all talking about online. All right. Like I said earlier, I really try to find what the internet is good when it's not just horrible trash, when the, there's something <laughs> nice on there, right? Well, I found a story that's going to make you really smile. So recently there was a miracle that happened at a school in Texas in Callisburg, Texas, which is just outside of Dallas. There is a janitor there. His name is Mr. James. Another kids know his first name, so they all just call him Mr. James. <laughs> and he is 80 years old. Um, he has been working for 70 years, and he finally retired, but was forced wow. back into the back into work because his rent went up. And so when his rent was hiked, he couldn't afford any longer to stay in retirement. So he went back to the school and continued working as a janitor. Well, the kids found out about this, found out about the story. And they said, what can we do to help him? And there was one kid, his name's Grayson Thurman. And he had a little modest following online, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, all that jazz. And so he had about 2,000 people. So he shared a video saying, hey, we're going to start a GoFundMe for our janitor so that he can go back into retirement, thinking that it would go a little bit and maybe he can get enough. Their goal was $10,000. So at first it got a little bit of money, got a little bit of traction, but wasn't really going crazy. Eventually it just popped. And that story went viral just enough for a local news station to get wind of it. (laughs) They went and did a story about these kids trying to raise this money for this janitor. It then went super viral. And within four weeks, they raised $270,000 for this janitor who was able to go back into retirement. Um, But his only comment, and I'll say this in the accent because he is an older man from Texas. When they told him about all the money that he would be getting and uh, he would be able to go back to retirement, he said, dang, that's all right. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great story. That's a oh, great Mr. story. James. Thanks for sharing that and finding that for us. Hey, listen, speaking of social media, if you're not already, make sure that you follow us wherever you go online. We are at Kim Commando. So it's Twitter.com. Okay. Slash Kim Commando, right? Instagram.com slash Kim Commando, Facebook.com slash Kim Commando. So just remember, wherever you're at, we are there too at Kim Commando. All right, coming up, don't forget all the little small things because Allie's going to be talking about the tech things that you should be cleaning. Uh, also, I have a super hilarious, amazing joke at the end. <laughs> okay, it's, it's an average joke at the end that um, I think you're really going to like here on Kim Commando today. All right, so I asked ChatGPT to write me 10 seconds about the Kim Commando newsletters. That's all I said. I went to ChatGPT. I said, give me 10 seconds about why people should sign up for the Kim Commando newsletters. Okay. Uh, Here's what it says. Looking for the ultimate tech scoop? Get the free Kim Commando newsletters. Stay ahead of the digital game with the latest tech tips, cybersecurity insights, and gadget reviews. Don't miss out on exclusive deals. This is your ticket to tech paradise delivered straight to your inbox. Sign up now and unleash your inner tech guru. Oh, you know what? It's not that bad. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's little a little cheesy. over the top cheesy, but, it is. you know. Yeah. You need to be drawn so, down a little bit. Anyway. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I, I think you know it's, but it's it's nice that I didn't have to like explain what the Kim Commando newsletter yeah. was or anything like that. I kind of knew about it. Uh, so you can sign up right now at getkim.com. Once again, that's getkim.com. All right, Allie, 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 oh. help us. All of our tech is gross. It's so gross. I know that you're taking your phone to the bathroom with you. Mm. I know that you just pulled something weird out of your dog's mouth and then you touched your headphones. I know that. <laughs> I don't know, you cut up something in the kitchen and forgot to wash your hands. Hopefully not chicken. Please mm. always wash your hands after chicken. But there are just so many things we touch all day long. And then we're touching these same devices. And if we've got some gross stuff on our phone and then we touch everything else. So you need to clean this stuff. Now, of course, we've talked about a million times things like your phone and your keyboard, your mouse, your TV remotes. Those are all a given. But what are some of the things that I think most people forget to clean? Kim, you gave me the inspiration for this one, smartwatch. Oh, yeah? Especially now that it's summer, if you exercise in your smartwatch, or maybe you just exist in the summer, <laughs> you're sweating and you are getting this thing dirty. Uh, if you have a fabric strap on it, especially, and you're working out in it, it's gross. So take off the strap. Uh, you'll probably, you'll need to wash that separately. You can power off the, you know, actual watch face and then wipe that down with a disinfectant wipe. Um, the band, it depends on what it is. If it's fabric, you can probably just use a little bit of, you know, uh, detergent and water. Um, if it's leather or something, you know, see if there's some, uh, see if there's a guide from your brand. But just clean that thing because I bet it's disgusting. Your headphones. You might remember your earbuds because when you take them out, you can see the crust mm. that has accumulated. Uh, yeah. Gross. It's so gross. Yeah. Which, by the way, I found a product. I think we should try it out. It's called yeah. Air. It's called AirPod Putty. And basically it's like, it kind of reminds me of blue tack, that stuff you stick posters up with. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. take a little bit of this putty and you stick it in there and it gets all the stuff so that you don't, oh, yeah. you know, you could use like a toothpick or something, but you're probably going to ruin your speakers. So we'll see if that works. But what about over the ear headphones? If you have a pair of those, I guarantee you those are also gross because they're touching your face and they're getting greasy and they're getting, yeah, those are gross, right? No. Yeah. So clean those two, give them a nice wipe down. Uh, oh, one that I did pretty recently, and every time I do this, I feel first disgusting and then like a hero. Uh, when you <laughs> clean the back of either your computer monitor or your TV, the the dust, the oh, grime, yeah. the you know, obviously you're not taking your TV to the to the toilet, but so much dust and dirt and stuff builds up there, so it's dirty in a different way. So you can use a blower, you can use a um, you can use just a vacuum, even a rag, <laughs> but get that stuff out of all those little nooks and crannies. And the final one on my list, when's the last time you took off your phone case? Oh. Oh, because yeah. if it's been a while, <clears throat> I guarantee you there are some disgusting bits in that thing. Take it off, clean your whole phone. Yes, I know you grab your phone and you like wipe it on your jeans and pretend like it's clean. It's not clean. <laughs> it's not Take off the case, sanitize it. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. You know, so John came out to uh, to Santa Barbara, and, and I was like, you know what, John, my, my, my headphones just don't work. My <laughs> earbuds, rather. They don't work. Oh, no. And, and John is our IT mm -hmm. genius. And, uh, and he said, uh, he looks at him and goes, well, you know, let me just see what I can do. And then the, about an hour later, he gives me, he goes, oh, they're all, they work now. And I'm like, oh, really? He goes, Gross, Kim. Gross. I'm, like, I'm so, so sorry. Uh, like so embarrassed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. I'm glad that you're laughing because it's time now for my joke. Mm. Okay? Let's do this. All right. Uh, now, just okay. You know, I've I've, I've been really stressed. Hurry, got a lot of things going <laughs> on. Having surgery saying. for Pete's sake. Yes. Exactly. <clears throat> okay. A guy's walking along the beach when he stubs his toe on a golden lamp. Then he picks it up and he gives it a rub and out pops this genie. And I am the genie of the lamp, he booms. I will grant you a single wish for releasing me. He says, oh, I know exactly what I'd like, says our hero. I've always wanted to visit Disney World, but I live in England. The problem is, is I'm so afraid of flying and traveling by a boat makes me sick. So there's no way that I can get from England to Florida unless there was a bridge. So I really would like you to give me a bridge so I could drive to Florida. And the genie leans back and goes, oh my gosh, you must be joking. The logistics alone boggles my mind. I mean, you're talking about pillars of concrete. 
hundreds of feet tall, carrying six lanes, 4,000 miles. I mean, if I were to do this, I'd be kicked out of genie land. So sorry, pal, you're going to have to come up with something more realistic, okay? He thinks for a moment, he goes, well, you know, I, I guess I should tell you that the reason why I'm out here on the beach is because I just had a really huge argument with my girlfriend. And we were about to get married, and she's like, I don't even want to see you anymore. So I want to really understand women. I want to understand what makes them tick. And then Jeannie looks at him and he says, you know, do you want lights on that bridge? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You know, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. That was pretty pretty good, good. yeah. All right, okay. (laughs) Hey, uh, coming up on the big Kim Commando show this weekend and that you get as a podcast Monday through Thursday, um, I've got the lowdown on what Sam Altman, he's the CEO of ChatGPT and his trip to Washington. Also, what's going on with the TSA that you're actually probably going to love. And now everybody can get a free TV, but there's a price. And I also interviewed the creator of the smart gun, the biometric gun, Oh wow, uh, Kai Kepler, hmm. and he's going to be on the show. And we're going to talk about Smart gun, how it works, where that data is stored. And also, I have just this great gal who calls, and she's 17 years old, and she's going to she's going to be a, the Girl Scout Gold Award, and she was wondering about how she could uh, start tracking her video links and her infographics. That's just a really, really sweet, sweet person. So you don't want to miss that. So that'll be Kim Commando Monday through Thursday. And this is always like where we leave you with a to-do list. And Matt, how about you go first? Not everything needs to be smart, guys. Um, (laughs) There are some things that we could, you know, I don't think you need the smart fork. Uh, So just be wary when you're buying smart devices. Make sure you really need it. It's, you know, mine not. (laughs) And how about you, Al? When I was giving that cleaning list, if any of those made you think like, oh, no, uh, do that. Uh, it's probably taking off your phone case if you're still thinking about that one. Uh, but hey, it might be your sweaty smartwatch. I don't know. And mine is um, take a look at your Facebook, your old stuff, and see if that's oh, really that <laughs> person who you are. Because uh, mm. I bet you've changed over time. And uh, again, just a reminder that I'm going to get my cornea transplant. And if you want to spread some good words and wishes and prayers, uh, just bring them on down to me, baby. Bring them on down. Just bring them on down. And Allie, again, she's going to be hosting for the next couple of weeks. And, you know, when I sat down first, when I first started doing this, and Barry taught me how to do the craft. I mean, this is a, this is, there's an art to doing audio products because you don't have that visual media. And so he sat me down, he said, you know, make sure that you sit up straight, speak from your diaphragm, project your voice, and always smile. And he said, you know what the first rule of radio is? And I said, what is it? Don't f*** up. (laughs) (laughs) So I am passing that along to you, Allie, passing that whole lesson off to you. I will not uh, f*** up. And then I will be back uh, in a couple of weeks. And I'll be able to see everything. I'm so excited. And thanks for being here. Yeah. This program is a copyrighted production of West Star Multimedia Entertainment and protected by the copyright laws. Any rebroadcast or use of this program for commercial, business, economic, or financial purposes without the written permission of West Star Multimedia Entertainment is strictly prohibited.